So who, here's the question. We're asking the YouTube chat now. We're asking <clears> all of you. If Purdue's the clear-cut number one in the Big Ten, you get to pick one team in this league beyond them that you trust to do something in March. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you my team that I'm still riding with. I'm riding with Illinois because very quietly they've won six of their last seven games. That team has some quality non-conference wins that would suggest that that yeah, they could beat the heavyweight. When they beat Texas at Madison Square Garden, that was a big time win for them. In conference yep. play here now, they're six and one in their last seven. Taron Shannon, we know what he could do as a lead guard. You've got the epitome of a winner in Matthew Meyer, who had a big game uh, this past weekend in their win over Wisconsin. Uh, to me, I, I like the way that these pieces have come together. Coleman Hawkins, I think, has gotten better. Yep. yep. And and they do have athleticism. They've got athletes, guys. Right underwood. There's no denying they've got athletes. They're my, my pick. T, I'll start with you. There's a who's the other team in the Big Ten that, that you like that you think uh, has a second best chance to make that deep run? All right, so you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I think the two guards at Northwestern are really good. Wow. I I really do think I, in wow. for the same reason we've talked about <laughs> we've talked about Miami with guards that can really make plays. We've talked about NC State guys that can really make plays. Uh, Northwestern has those guys too. I don't. I, what is it? Boo Booey and Chase. What was it? Audige, right? Audige. Yes, Audige. Yeah, Chase. Aldige, like those are two of the best guards in the Big Ten. It might be the best guard tandem in the Big Ten. Now think about that for a second. Like, are their games all that aesthetically pleasing compared to some of the other guards in the conference? Probably not. But by God, if it isn't efficient or not efficient, but if if it isn't good. Like those are two guys that can carry you through two games. They can, those are guys that can carry you through a game in the tournament. So, uh, Chris Collins, man, once every what is it? Once every fortnight or fourth year, like he can he he can find a way to get put a nice squad together, and he's done so this year. I like I like Iowa. I like Iowa. Um, I know they're coming off a two game streak, a uh, little skid right now. You know, did Goodman pay yeah. you to say that? No, I like I like Iowa. I was high on Iowa preseason too, and and, and if you think back to last year too, this is kind of around the time where they started to pick it up a little bit. Patrick McCaffrey just came back. The way their offense is, they're always going to be in games, right? They, you know, they're just they're going to find ways to score. Um, you know, so I I really like this Iowa team a lot, and you know, in terms of March too, like you have to think about it in terms of March Madness. There's not like a real scout, right? You get like one day to prepare for the team you're going up against. In terms right. of making a run in the tournament, I could see Iowa making that run. Um, you know, other you know, as the other team other than Purdue. Indiana's won five straight too, guys. They have. They have won five I, in a row. I like the way Indiana's playing right now. I just couldn't Tio, I couldn't pick them because, you know, me and Indiana fans got too much beef right now. I couldn't. <laughs> So I, I'm trying to figure out it. what the best what the best rivalry is on the field of 68. Is it uh, Jeff Goodman in Providence? Is it Geo in Indiana, or is it Tyler Hansborough in Kentucky? <laughs> like we have legitimate beef. Like, with those, all three. those are real beefs, right? There. You and <laughs> Iowa don't exactly. Beefs. You and Iowa don't exactly get along great. Well, it's not. They don't have very flexible mindsets. Let's put it yeah. that way. Okay, <laughs> they're stuck uh, in their ways. The, right. Here's here's the other thing about Indiana. Let's let's give a thought on Indiana here. Sure. Okay. You're right. They've won five in a row uh, during this winning streak. Trace Jackson Davis has been ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. He's got multiple thirty plus point games. He's averaging about twenty five and fifteen uh, on the winning streak. Jalen Hood, Shafino, last night was fantastic with six made threes in the first half. He's a star. Like, they've been able to adjust losing right. Xavier Johnson adapt they've got a younger core of players and I think it goes back to with Indiana like they need Hood Shafino and Renew to step up under the current circumstances those freshmen are what switch them to a different gear because the, the question that you're asking every time out for Indiana is will TJD get help will Trace Jackson Davis right. get help and when it's Tamar Bates or Trey Galloway for a game like when he just gets somebody being a Robin that's supplying backcourt scoring, it feels like it switches things to another level. And there's no mistaking. Mike Woodson's team is defending better here over the yeah. last three weeks. 
No question. Are, and Jalen Hood Shafino shooting 43% certainly helps. Yeah. I mean, Tamar Bates is shooting 41%. That certainly helps. Like, as long as they have another scoring threat on the floor, if Hood Shafino is consistently really good, like, you have a Batman and Robin situation right there with some floor spacing that's uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice in, in Bloomington. And it's, you know, Race Thompson come back just for moral support, it seems like. But, it, you know, they have different guys that can step in. They have guys that will embrace a role. Miller Cop has kind of, you know, he's he's shooting the cover off the ball and he's embracing this, hey, I'm going to kind of be this awkward, tough guy yep. that will mix it up <laughs> at the beginning of the game to, like, get my boys going. And yep. then I'll go back over here and sit in the corner. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have a guy like that that's just going to chirp a little bit. And they have some nasty to them. Indiana yeah. has some nasty to them. I think that's yeah. a big portion of it as well. And I, Trace Jackson Davis, it's him and Zach Eady. It's him and Zach Eady. Both of them could very well be first-team All-Americans. I agree. I yeah, mean, just, to, just, to, just to add to that, too, like, yeah. they do have some nasty to them now. And I think that's the biggest thing that we questioned was, was their toughness. And I feel like they responded to that really well. And, you know, Fanta, you mentioned, you know, Trace is getting some help, but it's it's the way he's getting help. Like Miller Cop is now diving on the floor. Bates is contributing. Galloway is contributing. The freshmen are contributing. You know, that's all that's all we really needed. It wasn't like, you know, we're asking these guys to score, you know, 10, 12 points a game. It's just be tough, play your role. And you're starting to see that. I mean, Miller Cop is this, he's playing great basketball right now. He's not he's not maybe he's not shooting the ball well. He's not getting a ton of shots, whatever it is. He's playing winning basketball. That's the most important thing. He's contributing to winning, and and we weren't seeing that before from some of these role players with Indiana.